Hi everyone, welcome back to Chops Garage and I've been doing it again. I've been buying cars I probably really shouldn't. Now recently I bought a lot of nice low mileage stock, which is, you know, people tend to like low mileage, although they don't like paying the premium for it. But this is totally at the other end of a spectrum. This isn't a car I've gone and um, looked for, to be honest. It's from a subscriber. He swung by the unit when I was here, straight back from holiday, so I was in a good mood, so that probably helped. <laughs> and um, it's a C220 Mercedes, and that's the CDI, so it's a 2.1 diesel. It's obviously the estate, and it's the sport version as well. Really nice looking car. He swung by and said, look, I'm getting myself a new Mercedes, a newer Mercedes, lower mileage. And I thought you might be interested in this because I watched the channel. So we had a good chat about it, had a good look over it. And um, we did a deal on it. Now, obviously, the reason I shouldn't really be buying this is because it's 159,000 miles. So for a retail sale, that is incredibly risky. And being a diesel, we've obviously got a list of other things that could go wrong with it. We've got the dual mass flywheel. We've got the injectors. We've got the EGR valves. We've got the, dual, uh, the D, uh, DPF, the diesel particulate filter. And that's just the start of things. Obviously, at this age as well, you know, there could be a lot of other wear within the car that could cause quite a lot of problems. So, um, yeah, a bit of a risky buy. Again, I probably wouldn't have bought it. If I didn't happen to be here when he swung by and I had a chance to have a chat with him, I'm a bit brave with cars like this when they come from subscribers because they tend to be honest and let me know what the score is with it. So uh, let's have a little look around it. So two keys, 59 plate, don't know if that's 2010 or a 2009, we'll have a look in a minute. That key doesn't seem to have any power in it. Well, this one, that one does. So we need a battery for one of the keys. We've got a tow bar on the back of it. I didn't ask him about how often he used that. Doesn't look massively used. Um, body work wise, really nice. Alloys have got a little bit of discoloration in them, a couple of places. Down this side seems to be good. Yeah, like I say, the alloys overall, they, they present well. They've just got a little bit of peel if you get close up on them. Around the front bumper seems okay. I know it's some light scratching down there, but I think a lot of that will buff out. I mean, one of the reasons I didn't mind the mileage was, I say he's using it daily and it's a clean car. And as a general rule, stuff that's used every day tends to be looked after and tends to run well. As you know, I'm a big high mileage sort of guy. I don't mind. Like I say, I bought the, the, um, I bought the Jag with 150,000 miles on it. This has got 135,000 miles on it. Mileage doesn't really bother me as much as it seems to bother everybody else. But then I like, I'm tight, I like to buy them cheap anyway. So you don't get both. You don't get cheap cars with low mileage. <laughs> That's not the way it works. Uh, inside, for the mileage, the trim's all nice. It's got that Mercedes. Why do all Mercedes smell the same? I think it's their um, M Tech leather, isn't it? Whatever it is, which isn't actually leather. A little bit of a crack down there. But otherwise seems to be pretty darn good. 159,887 miles. Now he did say it hasn't got a full service history. Um, but he said during his ownership, he's looked after it. And we've got a lot of paperwork here. Let's have a quick look. I don't want to show any of his details. Just put a new advisory free MOT on it or within a month or so. It is a 2009, nearly 2010, 2011. Uh, it's the C220 Blue Efficiency Sport CDI Estate. So sports are always nice looking ones. Yeah, and 2.1 uh, 2 uh, 2100 cc engine. MOT to the 6 2024. So yeah, done a couple of months ago. Advisory free. Got a couple of services here, 2018, 2019. We've got one in 2023. Let's just cover up his information here. 2023 rear brake pads, front brake pads and discs. I thought they all looked clean. Sensor wires, adjust front wheel bearings, replace near side front spring, lower arm, anti roll. Should drive nicely with all the suspension updated like that. All work here, 6th 2022, gaskets, oil cooler, thermostat, water pump, um, throttle body. 122, more suspension, tyres, gaskets. Um, sorted out some oil and coolant leaks by the looks of it there as well. Yes, service in 2022. There's a service here in 2020 as well. Four former keepers. 
Overall, not a full service issue, but I would say is during our um, subscriber's ownership. They've obviously given it whatever it needs to be done and had it serviced. And it's had a lot of the big stuff you'd want done at this sort of age. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think with the mileage, yeah, should be okay, I'd have said. But automatic, of course, with paddle shifts, which most of the Mercs are. Let's um, just start her up from Cole because she has been sitting here overnight. It is saying it's overdue a service there, so it'll be worth us doing an oil and filter on it. Nice starts up sweetly. No dual mass flywheel rat rattle. No indication of any leak down with any smoke pouring down where the injectors leak down into the cylinders. Got a nice little screen up there. Don't let the system distract you from the traffic situation. We won't. Bluetooth. Yeah, nice, nice motor. We need to go for a drive in this. I think what we'll do is we'll probably drive it home in a bit and I will report back. Now our subscriber did say he occasionally got an engine light that gave him a reduced power, which sounds like a um sounds like a limp mode of some kind. So I think we want to run some codes on it. I say I want to do a bit of driving in it. Now it could be DPF. Might have a blocked up DPF if it's happening occasionally. Could be something as simple as an air mass meter. Could be ECU. Well, you know, we're not really going to know till we start driving again, but we'll plug it in and see if there's any any um, codes that have been sitting around in it. Just out of interest. Oh, electrically lifting boot. That's nice. What's under here? Bit of a paint touch-up kit. I can see the spare wheel down there. This all looks clean and tidy. This all looks... And we've got the boot cover as well, which they can get expensive if they're missing these days. Oh, it's, so it is proper, proper electric boot. Lovely job. I don't think we can check the oil. I think they're electronic on these, aren't they? You can have a look at the coolant. We haven't done it long enough to cool it to the right level. Let's say I'm a big fan of cheap, high mileage cars. Like I say, unfortunately, everyone wants to get their uh, cake and eat it, and they want low mileage stuff cheaply, but that's not the way it works if it's got low mileage. You know, it pushes the price up. But there's some bargains to be had in the, uh, you know, the uh, higher mileage stuff if you choose the right ones. I mean, we see from the discs and pads here, they've definitely been done. They all look very new and very recently. You see the even the pads, look, I mean, they, they've got no age at all at all. I forget what the invoice date was them on was on them. Tires have got loads of tread on. They're a, a Cooper, which I have heard of before. Don't think they're a, a be, oh, Falcons on the back. They haven't got too long left in them. But realistically, something like this is probably, probably three, four, nine, five, I'd say. Which is a cheap bit of motoring really, isn't it, for what you're getting. So when it comes to code reading, we've got something new to try today. We've got a Top Don RT-Link 500B. We've always got time for Top Don, haven't we? They are a great company. They're doing really good products. Massively supportive of all the raffles. Massively supportive of Chops Garage. Um, and I say they just do good kit. Now the difference with this code reader is, as I understand it, and I've not read the instructions as per normal, it um, is a battery tester, but also a code scanner as well. Whether it'll be in depth enough for a Mercedes, I know, I think I know Mercedes have a quite complex system, don't they? If I've read correctly, but we'll give it a go. So one thing with Top Don, you always know it's a Top Don product because their packaging is always really nice. It's a strange thing to say, but it's just something you notice when you get their kit. Right, let's get it all plugged in. So we're all plugged in. We can see we've got the leads here as well for if we wanted to do a battery test on the car, which we might do in a minute and just check out how that works. So we've got battery test, OBD is what we want to do. Uh, now I haven't read the instructions as per normal, so we'll click OK. Oh no, I've knocked it down. OK. I need the keys in the ignition, aren't I, I think? At least in the first stage. 
right processing. Oh, right, okay, cool. Jeez, that was quick. How quick was that? Uh, DTCs in the system two, redness complete three, data stream supported. Right, okay, so let's see what the codes are then. Uh, how do we do that? How do we do that? Let's just click OK. Oh, there we go. That was it. Simple as that. Read OK. Read codes. Generic. Particular filter restrictions. Soot accumulation bank one. Ah, there we go. So my quick diagnosis was right. Unfortunately, it looks like it could be the DPF. So, difficult one. Sometimes... They can be taken off and cleaned out. That's probably the best thing to do with it. Take it out and clean it out. Sometimes you can put a cleaner in and just get it really hot and clear it out. I think it's going to be a case of how often it comes on. So I think we need to have a little dry. But that'll be why he's gone into limp mode as well. Or why he's experiencing less power because he's got a blocked up DPF. All right, there was another code as well, wasn't it? So we just get down to scrap. Oh, hold on. Mass or volume airflow sensor. Uh, that's the other thing I said it could be is the airflow sensor so it's a difficult one isn't it because there's no codes on the dash at the moment so that could be an historic one. Oh no it says current um, and it says current that's most likely going to be the one that's stopping it performing if it's not performing all the time we need to take it for drive because if it is underpowered all of the time then it's going to be the air mass if it is um, only when that Am I that right in saying? Guys, you know I'm going along as a learner. In my experience, the diesel particulate filter won't stop the car from performing all of the time. But the air mass will. So it could be that's all we need to do to solve the problem. And the um, DPF one, just like I say, put a cleaner through, get it nice and hot, clear it out. Or worst case scenario, have it taken off and have it cleaned out that way. So um, I think it's, it's a lot of this is going to come down to drive. But this topped on how quick was that how quick was that nice and easy to read let's have a look at the other features so i've got the engine run now i thought i'd see what else this will do because i can see down here we've got data stream which if it's got a lot there as well that's this is probably going to be all the bit of kit you need if you're doing more basic fixes like me yeah look we've got uh load value coolant temperature intake manifold pressure engine rpm vehicle speed Intake, temperature, airflow, throttle. Um, what else have we got? Fuel rail pressure, that's a good one to have. Oxygen sensor. Catalyst temperature. To be honest, this is all most of you are going to need, to be honest, on one of these little bits of kit. And the fact that it does your battery check as well, it's probably all you're going to need in total. Again, not read the instructions, guys, as, I, as you know the score. So with these Mercedes, you need to... Under it there and then find yourself an earth, which uh, I'm not sure if there is an approved earth somewhere here, but I'm going to choose to put it on that nut down there. That's an earth nut down there. Oh, it's already started. Battery test. Uh, battery test, cranking test, charging system test, system test. Let's just go with battery test. Uh, oh god, he's lost me. I'm just a bit regular flooded. Oh, I don't know. I can't see the battery. Testing. Health, hundred percent. Charge, hundred percent. Internal. So the battery is all good on this one. Um, should we exit that and do a cranking test? Please start the engine. Got 30 seconds to get around here and get it started. Press OK. Cranking time normal. Looks like we've got a strong battery too. So as normal, I'm impressed with that bit of kit from Top Dong. That's great. Within a few minutes, we've been able to check our battery's healthy, been able to pull the codes off it, get an idea of what's going on with it. All nicely packaged. Like I say, luckily, they put up with the fact that I'm probably the worst reviewer in the world because I don't read instructions. 
and I don't go and read all the in-depth stuff on it because I use it like you and I are going to, you know, like most of you are going to use it. I know some of you will take the time to research it further than I do. But on that little, you know, genuine first test, really super easy to use. Got me all the information I need. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to leave it plugged in. Oh, by the way, we'll have a discount code for this. They always give me discount codes for you guys. So I'm going to put a link in the description down below with a link to it. And I'll probably put the code on the screen now, but it'll be in the in the description down below as well. Massive thanks to Top Don, as always, like I say, fantastic supporters of the channel, of the raffles, and also a fantastic manufacturer of goods as well. Anyway, let's um, have a quick look and see if I can see where, I might have to go online and find out where the air mass plugs in. It'll be underneath this cover, I imagine, somewhere. And then we'll know to unplug it when we want to test what's going on. Uh, yeah, that looks like a... It's staring you in the face, isn't it, James? It's going to be that down there, isn't it, guys? It's going to be that there, I would have thought. I'll double check that online. It'll be one of these two here. And um, like I say, if we're having performance problems, we'll unplug it and see if it gets better with that unplugged now like i say our subscriber told me this he was straight up front about it he's been using it every day anyway but he was up front about it and obviously we factored into the price that we might have to do this work and it could be as simple as an air mass meter it could be we need a diesel particulate filter that's the risk when you buy these cars unfortunately as i've said before this is effectively, according to the manufacturer, end of life. At this age and this mileage, things will go wrong with your car. Don't buy them thinking that they won't. And sometimes you'll be lucky and they won't. You know, sometimes you can be lucky and they won't. Other times you have a nightmare and you have to do loads to it. And then sometimes you fall in between and you just do the level of maintenance you'd expect at this age. The trouble is you cannot buy one of these off a dealer at this age and expect for it to be any different we don't have crystal balls we don't know what's going to go wrong with it yes we should sell you something that's fit for purpose and if within the first 30 days you're driving this car around and a fault comes up then it needs to be sorted out by the dealer but after that you're driving an old car with high mileage you can't expect to have an as new you know as a brand new car warranty on it and six months down the road whinge because you're having problems with it it's it's the risk you took if you don't want those risks go and buy it at 20 grand so think next thing for it like I say is just take it for a drive and see what we think and we've got an idea of where we need to to be with it if we're having problems don't we and we'll see how quickly the engine lights come on see ya uh... there's my washers there we go we've got cruise control it's got all the toys as you'd expect in a Mercedes let's see how she feels Yeah, engine manual and lights pop straight up. Straight up. Still feels pretty nippy though. I can't say it feels drastically slow, or am I wrong? smooth like you'd expect a Mercedes to be. That suspension work was well worth the money because the ride is nice. 150,000 miles with old suspension. Normally be clunking about the place. Steering feels tight as a drum. Yeah, initial impressions are this could easily be a car that had done 60,000 miles. I'll have to plug it in again and see which light specifically has come back, whether both lights have come back or the one light has. I'm hoping just the math one's come back, but that'd be a bit too much luck, wouldn't it? No, I think it's I think it's in restricted performance. Paddle shifts work. Let's see if it's in restricted. I can't decide. Yeah, no, it's in restricted performance. Um, 
let me pull over and check what code we've got because it is the math sensor I might just unplug that for a bit and see if it makes any difference I've got a feeling it'll be the DPF because I don't know if a math sensor puts you into a limp mode or if it's just or if it's just that actually the faulty math is stopping the performance or if it's just the faulty math is stopping the performance to be fair though it's plenty enough performance to get you ticking along to find a convenient place to pull over where we're not going to block everyone in and unfortunately on this road there aren't a lot of places like that but no ride is ride is really nice steering is really nice seat doesn't feel like it's done that mileage the bolsters are still nice and firm right i didn't set up the camera again but i've driven off down the road the lights have stayed out on the dash but we're still limited to 60 mile an hour which is a national speed limit so i don't need to go faster than that anyway do i <laughs> um so i don't know i still can't decide if it's a kind of a limp mode or if we've got a problem with the math what i think i'm going to do is try and unplug the um the airflow sensor and see if we get any better performance with that because it doesn't seem to want to accelerate particularly hard and it won't go like say we, we need to go to mexico and test if it goes a bit faster than that so we're going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor but interestingly i've just had a look and the sheath is cut on it and there is a little heat shrink over it that wire there so i do wonder if someone hasn't had a play before came out a bit easily so we'll see I imagine we'll get an engine management light for it being disconnected no we haven't okay let's see if it forms any better um, I probably haven't got time to set you up again so I'll have to stop and tell you well actually this video is running on a bit too long so I think what we'll need to do is keep you in suspenders till the next one won't we um, if you want to know what it's like trading old cars like this, make sure you give that Chops Garage a subscribe down below. And um, we'll update you on the next one, how we get on with this and all those other old cars we bought and all the dramas that come along with trading that kind of stuff. So many thanks for watching as always, and we'll see you on the next one.